Okay, we're gonna do uh, AC panel. So here's what an AC panel sort of installation looks like. For reasons of conceptual diagram, I've decided to break out the AC panel inverter loads or what are called as pass-through loads on a separate panel. But a lot of us will have that be the same panel. Just the back is different. Like you'll separate the bus. But ultimately, conceptually, there could be different panels. Okay? On some big boats, they'll actually even make it nice. There'll be top section is shore power generator, and they'll have a middle section that's inverter loads. Like on big 50, 60 footers, they'll start doing that. They'll do that at the factory because they know that not all loads are the same. <clears throat> but ultimately, it could be just one big panel and you just do the work behind, but you'll have loads that you decide that you're going to be potentially run on the inverter or shore power and some loads that can only ever be run off shore power. Loads that can only ever be run on shore power should be your hot water tank or a battery charger. You should never run your battery charger off your batteries through an inverter. Happens, but that should never be. Okay, so if you're buying an AC panel, what are you looking for? You want amps to know how much you draw because oddly enough, a lot of us on AC are gonna draw a lot more than what's available. Common problem. We have a lot of AC loads, especially running heaters in the winter. You might easily pop a 50 amp breaker, no problem. 30 amp, no problem. So this tells you how much you're drawing and then you can start throttling back your loads. You can't do everything you want, no matter how big the boat is. I don't care, I'm working on a big 100 footer right now. I don't care how big it is. It could be worked on 145 footers. It doesn't matter how big the boat is. It doesn't matter how stupid the budget is. There are always more AC loads than a generator or shore power can give you. You always have to manage loads on a boat, always. There's just more than they are capable of being done by shore or generator. So you wanna know what your amps are to decide. Oh, I'm gonna run my hot water tank, I'm gonna run my water maker, I'm gonna run my garbage uh, compactor, I'm gonna run my washer dryer, but I can't do it all. I'm gonna run a secondary charger, I'm start dive compressor. You start pulling back depending on what happens. You just have to. And on a normal boat, like I have, I have to decide and I say, you know what? I'm not gonna run my hot water tank when I want my batteries to be bulk charging. Like I want all of my amps to go to battery charging. Right? Because I only have a 30 amp receptacle on my boat, for sure. You might have also a device that allows you to do source selecting between generator one, generator two, shore one, shore two, right? Really big important device is this reverse polarity light. That is incredible, it's worthwhile. That tells you that the hot and the neutral are reversed. Huge safety issue, by the way, huge safety issue. That is one step away from literally complete death. So you only need another accident, which on, by the way, 5% of boats have. You have that and you have the other 5%, it's basically, winning, it's opposite of winning the lottery. So you never want, this is rare, but if that happens and you have a boat that's miswired, you literally, and this is, I met an instructor at BYC, that's how his son died, swimming in Oregon on the Columbia. Okay, so two things need to happen, but if those two things are there, which are pretty rare, but if you get that combination, it's game on, okay? And then you want a protective AC back cover, and then you're gonna have, it's nice, some of the new panels, you'll be able to buy a neutral and a ground bus in the back, which is great. This is what a traditional metal panel looks like. Blue Seas makes them, we use them all the time, they're great. Um, if you're tackling an AC panel, Big fan, we talked about this earlier. We, what did we say about disconnecting? You're working on AC on your boat, right? Not just trusting to your AC breaker or you actually physically disconnect your shore power cord. Coil it up, put it in the lazarette, disconnect your inverter, right? So disconnect all AC sources. Your generator, your, you know, some people have, like rarely, but some people do have auto gen starts, right? Disconnect the battery switch from your generator, right? It should have a switch. Make sure your generator can't start. Label all the cabling. Make sure you have the right size breaker and the right size cabling. And please, oh God, and I've seen it, I know most of us do this, but there is nothing more, I think, dangerous than someone to say either they're, they're not colorblind, clearly, but they choose to be colorblind and wire the whole panel on an arbitrary color designation that they've decided that they're gonna do that day. 
And most of those people decide the next day is going to be a different day. So I've come on boats where we've almost lost uh, one of our number one technician, almost died, literally came this close. If, if it was me, I would have died. Any other person would have died. It's only because he's just like off the spectrum smart. He kind of saw a few signs and he was able to figure out. But they actually had wired the DC input and the AC input on a charger, both with AC wiring. And they had put the AC input to the DC output of the charger because they were both the same color. They had blown three chargers. Western, West Marine had called us on a service call. They're like, this is weird. Why are three pronautic chargers blowing up in a row? This is gonna be the fourth one. And we sent a technician down. It was because they literally, the operator had decided to save money to buy just simply triplex wire and run the AC in and the DC out from the same wire. But when they took the charger off, they inverted it. <clears throat> and so when you disconnect DC lows on a charger, you're thinking this is benign. It's not a source of power, it's just 12 volts. But it was actually AC 120 coming into the boat. I would have died if I went on that service call for sure. It would be done. There's no way I would ever think that you'd have AC input going to a battery charger output. Never. Now I'm more cautious, but this is why the code matters, right? The code is there so that things are predictable. I tell people all the time, people say, well, it doesn't matter, it's just a color. I'm like, well, so is driving on the right side of the street versus the left side of the street. It just makes it easier going home when we all know where incoming traffic is, right? It's not that the road, you can drive on both sides. You could drive in reverse on the wrong side. It's gonna go home, but it's a little bit unexpected. And so this is a way for you to make it easy for anybody else who ever works on your boat to just go, okay, I got it. Everything's to code. Less guessing, right? So any questions on AC paneling or AC systems on your boat? Okay, all right.